verse number 21. Genesis chapter 5, verse 21. It says, And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years. That's a good 365, 365 days of the year you should walk with God. And Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. We're going to do a quick Bible study right there. And it says, and Enoch walked with God, and the next four verses says, I mean four words, it says, and he was not. And he was not. We're going to do a quick Bible study on some things you ought not to be. Some things you ought not to be. Some things in the Bible that it says, be not, or be ye not. Be not. Hey, but before that, before Enoch walked with God, Enoch obviously had to have a birth. He had to have a birth. Before you can walk with God, you have to be born again. You're not going to walk with God on your own power. You have to have a new birth. Uh, you say, preach, I'm already saved. Well, good. That's just who we're talking to. We're talking to the saved. Uh, look at Romans chapter number 12. Some things you ought not to be. This isn't going to be very deep, but it'll help you if you listen to it. Romans chapter five, uh, 12, verse number 1. Some things the Bible says, be not, or be ye not. Uh, verse number 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Look at this. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And he says, number one, be not conformed to the world. Be not conformed to the world. Hey, he said it's our reasonable service to live for God. It's our reasonable service. We're not to be conformed to the world. Instead of being conformed, he says, you should be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind is a battlefield that you have to fight constantly. Uh, you say, how do I transform, how do I renew my mind? Hey, by reading the Bible, by getting in the Word of God, reading the Scripture, following along with the daily Bible reading schedule, that'll help renew your mind. Another way is coming to church, hearing preaching, and getting around good, godly people. That's a way to renew your mind. Also, praying. Praying is a great way to renew your mind. You need to have a constant relationship with God. It says, pray without ceasing. Hey, in everything, give thanks. Hey, you need to pray. Saturate yourself with the things of God. Look in uh, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter number 1. The mind's a dangerous place, and if you're not careful, <clears throat> you'll allow the devil in there, and he'll, he'll wreak havoc in your life. 2 Timothy chapter number 1. Look at verse number 7. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. The Bible says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, look, and of a sound mind. A sound mind is something that God has given you at, at salvation, but if you're not careful, you can lose your sound mind. Uh, flip back to Philippians. Philippians chapter number 2. Uh, Y'all know these verses, but it's good to read them. It's good. It's, you never can read the same verse too many times. Philippians chapter 2. Look at verse number 5. It says, uh, let this mind be in you, what mind, which was also in Christ Jesus. So he's saying you should have the mind of God. Then he goes on talking about what the mind of God is and how you ought to think. God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. God done a lot of things, but that's the mind that you should have. You need to be careful not to be conformed to the world, but to have a renewed mind, your mind. Uh, not only, number one, to be conformed to this world. Number two, be not conceited. Look in uh, Romans Back in Romans chapter number 12. Romans 12, verse number 16. The Bible says, Be of the same mind and toward one another. Mind not high things, but, con but uh, condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Be not wise in your own conceits. Be not conceited. Hey, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. You say, why, preacher? Because you'll lose your compassion. If you forget where God brought you from and what God saved you from, you'll, forget, you'll lose your compassion to the world, to sinners. You won't look at men and think what God can do. You'll think, man, look at that mess. You need to be, be careful not to be conceited. Uh, pride is a very dangerous thing. Pride is dangerous. Uh, um, Proverbs 18 verse 16 says, Pride go up before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Hey, pride to keep a man from getting saved. 
Pride will keep a man from getting saved. There's been many occasions where pride kept a man from getting saved. Uh, pride will keep a man from getting right with God. Pride will keep you from getting right with God. Pride will keep you from doing something God wants you to do. Maybe God wants you to hand out a gospel track or go witness to somebody, but you're too prideful to hand it out. Hey, pride will keep you from doing something that God wants you to do. You need to be careful not to think more highly of yourself than you ought to. You need to have a humble spirit. God is, uh, uh, he resists the proud but giveth grace to the humble. You need to have a humble spirit. Not Be not conceited. Uh, number we have we got nine points. We're going through them quickly. Eight points. Uh, number three. Look at us. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. It's just you could. It's a very easy Bible study. You look up be not and and uh, follow it out or be not and you'll see all these different. There's <clears throat> there were many more, but I got these eight. I felt like they they were uh, could be helpful. Second Corinthians chapter six. Look in verse number fourteen. Number three. Be not unequally yoked. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial, what part hath he that believeth with an infidel, and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out Come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Hey, we, should, we, shouldn't, uh, we need to be careful not to hang out with the wrong kind of people. And I know what uh, many Christians will say, well, I'm trying to win them to Christ. Yeah, well, you know when you go around these places that they are, and you hang out with them, and they're doing the things they do, it's very easy for the devil to tempt you into doing the same thing they're doing. Uh, it's a lot easier to pull down than it is to pull up. So you need to be careful. You need to, hey, invite them to church. If you, if you want to hang out with them, if they want to be around you, tell them to come to church. Be around things that we're doing at church. That's a good way to get them around. You can be around them, but not in the wrong environment. Um, it's easier to pull down than it is to pull up. You need to be careful not to hang around with the wrong crowd because if you're not careful, you'll find yourself slipping. you find yourself doing the same thing they're doing. Uh, birds of a feather flock together. You know the statements, you lay down with dogs, you get the fleas. There's a bunch of them, but it, they ring true for, for Christian life too. It's not just in the worldly sense. Be not unequally yoked together. Uh, number four, look in Titus. Titus, chapter number three. Be not conformed to this world. Be not conceited. Be not unequally yoked. And number four, be not unfruitful. Look in uh, Titus chapter 3, verse number 14. It says, uh, And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary use, that they be not unfruitful. Be not unfruitful. We should be bearing fruit. Hey, you, you'll know the tree by what kind of fruit it bears. You say, what kind of fruit should I be bearing? Look in uh, Galatians. Galatians chapter number 5. Verse 22, Daddy said that right, he always remembers where this is at. It's 5 plus 2 plus 2 equals 9. 9 is the fruit of the, 9 is the number that represents fruit in your Bible. Galatians 5, verse 22, the Bible says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law this is the fruit of the spirit hey there's some there's some stuff in there like long suffering and meekness and gentleness that's not easy to bear but you should be bearing this fruit you should not be unfruitful hey we need to make sure that we're bearing fruit for god hey you're bearing fruit one way or another it just depends on what kind of fruit you're bearing are you bearing the fruit of the spirit or the fruit of the world you're bearing some kind of fruit and people are watching your life especially when you when you tell them that you're a christian the world's going to be watching you. They want to see what kind of life you're living. They want to see what kind of fruit's going to grow off of your tree. We need to make sure that we're showing this world Christ in every way. People's hey, you've heard the saying, you might be the only Bible that some people read. So you need to make sure you live your life in a way that when people read your life, they're going to say, man, he's got something I want. He's got something different about him. So don't, be not unfruitful. Look in uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Chapter number 6. This one's got about 8 of them in the same verse. 
1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 9. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Look, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. And he says, be not deceived. We'll talk about that one later. But then he goes on and says, neither fornicators. Look uh, in uh, chapter 7 right here in verse number 1. It says, Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Hey, that'll help a lot of things right there if you just keep your hands to yourself. Uh, don't give me no lines and keep your hands to yourself. You know what they say. <laughs> so, hey, that'll help a lot if you just, hey, don't touch them. Uh, not only that, it says, neither idolaters. Hey, uh, D kind of hit on this. You say, I'm not, I don't worship idols. Hey, you make an idol out of anything you put before God. Anything. Uh, it might be a singer. It might be sports. Hey, sports is I don't uh, sports is one of my favorite things. But I try I I don't allow sports to come between me and God. You say, uh, preacher, I don't allow them to come between me and God either. Well, how come you're missing Wednesday night for for practice or for a game? And you say, well, he's got a games and we paid for him. Yeah, but what's more important, the sports or God? Hey, even if even if he was if little Johnny was good enough to go professional, you know every professional sport plays on Sunday. So it's not. I don't. It's 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 a it's wrong for you to pursue a professional sport because none of them play on days that ain't church days. Every one of them play on Sundays, no matter what sport it is. And let's be honest, ain't nobody in here going professional. So you need to not. Don't make that an idol. Don't make sports an idol. Not only that, some people make stars an idol. Hollywood, they make stars idols. You worship them. You 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 do everything. You keep up with them. Hey. Uh, speed boats, Danzo hit that earlier, lakes, you make the lake an idol. You worship in the lake on Sunday instead of coming to church. Uh, summer vacations, social media, there are a lot of things that you can make idols if you're not careful. You better not put anything before God. It should be God first and then everything after that. Uh, he also says uh, we shouldn't be adulterers. We shouldn't be adulterers, and that one pretty much preaches itself. But not only that, uh, you know you're the bride of Christ. You are the bride of Christ. Don't commit spiritual adultery on God. Don't run around on God with the world. Don't run around on God with sin. Don't run around on God with the devil. Hey, don't commit spiritual adultery. Uh, and not only that, he says, nor effeminate. Amen to that. You don't need to be effeminate. I'm pretty sure we got that one covered here because if we don't, we'll pick on you if you come around here. Don't be effeminate, man. If you're a man, be a man. If you're a woman, be a woman. Uh, look in uh, 2 Corinthians right here in chapter number 5. Be not, be not, some things you ought not to be. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, look at verse number 3. It says, if so, if, so be that, if, if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Not be found naked. Hey, you shouldn't be naked, and I know... Over in Exodus 28, verse 42, it tells about covering the nakedness. It should go to your thighs, but not only physically naked, you shouldn't be spiritually naked. You shouldn't be spiritually naked. Look in uh, John chapter number 21. John chapter 21, verses number 4. This is after Jesus was buried and he rose from the dead. He come back over there and found found these boys fishing. John chapter 21, verse number 4 says, And when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith uh, unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast a net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They, they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore the disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord now, when Simon heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat uh, upon him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. Hey, God's going to show up one day uh, to this earth. Don't let him find you naked when he shows up. Don't let him find you spiritually naked when he shows up. Hey, don't lose your standards. Don't lose your standards that God's given you. Look in uh, Mark chapter number 5. You know when God's going to show up? When you least expect it. When you least expect it. So you should always be prepared, always be ready. Hey, don't be spiritually naked when he shows up. Mark chapter 5, look in uh, verse number 15. The Bible says, And they came to Jesus and see him 
that was possessed with the devil. That's the maniac of Gadara. And it says, and he had, and had the legion sitting, look, and clothed and in his right mind. That goes back to the other point about having the right mind. And they were afraid. Hey, you need to be sitting, clothed, and in your right mind. You better have some standards when God shows up. Look in uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 61. If you get around God, he'll clothe you with some spiritual clothes. Clothes. Uh, Isaiah 61, verse number 10 says, I will, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of, of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with, or, with ornaments and as a bride or, uh, or adorneth herself with her jewels. Hey, don't let God find you spiritually naked when he shows up. Hey, make sure you have spiritual clothes on. Uh, number seven. Number seven, and we only got eight, so we about done. Galatians. Galatians chapter number seven. Galatians, not chapter seven, chapter six. Appreciate it. Verse seven. Galatians six, verse seven. The Bible says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Hey, he says, be not deceived. Be not deceived. Hey, you better be careful not to be deceived. You say, preacher, I've been in church too long to be deceived. Hey, the devil deceived Eve, a sinless Eve, in a perfect environment. If you're not careful, he can deceive you too. And it says, and no, uh, and no mystery for uh, Satan himself had transformed into an angel of light. And he can look, he can make it look like it's the right thing if you're not careful. Don't be deceived. And he says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Hey, you're gonna reap something. What are you sowing? Hey, you better be sowing the right things. Hey, you better be careful. God told us to sow. He didn't tell us to give the increase. He told us to sow and let him worry about the increase. Oh, uh, look in uh, 1 Corinthians. Flip over to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. God just told us to do the sowing. Hey, the parable of the sower, he went out and sowed. He did, it wasn't his fault that it, wasn't, it didn't increase. It was because the ground it landed on. Uh, God, God to give the increase if you sow. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, <coughs> verse number 27. says, over there in Luke chapter 5, Jesus was telling them uh, to cast, cast the net again. This was before when he was calling them. He told them to cast the net. And Peter said, we've told all night, nevertheless, at thy word I'll cast. So he threw out, he cast again. And the Bible says in verse number 27, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I, preach, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And y'all probably heard me say this, but he says, I myself should be a castaway. And Peter over there, he said, Nevertheless, at thy net I'll let down at thy word I'll let down the net. And when he did, he caught a great multitude of fishes. He was just he was just a castaway. He was one castaway. You might you might be out there trying to sow seed and you just say, I'm not getting any increase. You might just be one castaway. You might just need to throw throw your line out there again. You might catch a fish. You might catch a soul. Hey, don't don't give up casting just because you ain't catching. Don't give up sowing because you don't see the increase. Hey, the Bible just says so. Hey, so and let him bring the increase. Uh, look back in Galatians, chapter number seven. <laughs> Galatians chapter six. Galatians chapter six, verse number nine. It says, "And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not." Hey, he said number eight. Don't be weary and well doing. Don't be weary and well doing. Don't give up. Don't give up. Just keep fighting, Christian. Don't give up just because it gets hard. Look at uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans 8. Hey, don't give up doing the right thing. Hey, keep, keep, keep sowing the word. Keep sowing uh, you see. Don't give up when it gets hard. Romans 8, verse number 18. If anybody had the reason to give up, it would have been Paul. Paul had the reason to give up, but in verse 18 he says, For I reckon 
that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Hey, the sufferings on this earth ain't even to be compared with what God has prepared for us in heaven. Don't give up when it gets hard. Hey, don't, don't give up. Hey, look back in uh, Genesis chapter number 5 where we started over here with Enoch. Genesis chapter number 5. Genesis 5, verse number 24, it says, And Enoch walked with God, and it says, And he was not. Why? For God took him. For God took him. Hey, if you're saved, God has taken you. God has taken you, so we ought to not be some things. We ought to not be conformed. We ought to not be conceited. We ought not be unequally yoked, unfruitful, unrighteous, uh, naked, Deceived or weary in well doing. Hey, there's some things you ought not to be when you when you're a Christian. Some things you ought not to be. I mean, we at this time you can take a break. I know we got out early, but we'll be back at eleven.